Ah, out. Laser dicks, you sexy motherfuckers. Yeah. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another exciting episode of Laser Dicks. I'm Chris. And I'm Ken. And today we are talking about potpourri. Yes. Yo, not that smelly shit your mom puts in the bathroom, but laser discs that are just chock full of random clips. Says you. I mean, these smell pretty good. <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm not saying they smell bad. I'm just saying uh, it's not it's 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 not that random bowl of like dried leaves that you've seen. It's a laser disc with with things on and, it. And I figured we should do an episode like this because you know we kind of try to group some of these together mm-hmm. and we try to talk about some of the technology. But there's a lot of cool stuff that we have that doesn't have a genre. You know, yeah. and it doesn't have like a category that could fit in. Yeah. So I figured let's bring out the weird and, stuff. And we have oddly a good chunk of them. Well, exactly. Oh, I, I have a chunk. I have a chunk. You had a chunk of uh, horror movies last episode. Yeah. And now uh, now you've got one. You've got one. Why don't you start off? You got the one. And uh, and I see over there that it's by Pioneer. Yeah. So it's uh, it's called uh, it's called Laser Optics 2. The Future of Home Entertainment by Pioneer. And it's basically just uh, like a demo that you could slap in. Like, say you're, uh, you know, uh, you're a store. You're trying to sell laser discs. You're trying to sell, you know, big screen TVs. Pop this in the laser disc player and it's showing you the, um, uh, the, all the, the, what, uh, what, it, what it can do visually, what it can do audio, uh, audio, audio logically. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> mostly, m- yeah, right. And it's mostly, f- uh, full of clips from popular movies oh, where okay. you can be like, Hey, look at how good, uh, let me, uh, Jaws. Yeah. <laughs> Jaws was the first one that I saw on the, on the list. Look at how good Jaws looks and sounds on this TV or music videos like Aha's hunting high and low. Sure. I don't think I've ever seen that music I'm gonna video. I'm going to borrow that from you because I kind of want to check all that out. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I've never, I, I, I popped it in to make sure it works, but I never actually watched it, watched it. Mm. So, but yeah, but it, so it uh, splits it into different categories, you know, uh, uh, like, you know, the sharpness of picture, the purest of sound, mm. hottest entertainment. Oh. Uh, you know, and then, uh, and, and then uh, it's got uh, demos for surround sound too. Oh, okay. I should pop this in. <laughs> yeah, I mean you've got the. the I've got pl- the surround sound. Yeah, yeah. See, that's cool though because I figured they need to do something like this because laser discs at the time were expensive technologies. You know, like they you had to invest money into them. Yeah. In order to uh, in order to get like the picture perfect sound. Yeah, and, yeah. Exactly. Prove prove to me why I should spend you know a thousand dollars on a laser disc player and fifty dollars on a laser disc movie. Exactly. So I'll follow that up with one that I've got, mm-hmm. which I per, per, uh, purposely got. Because, I mean, a lot of these demonstration discs are out there. Yeah. And you can pick them up for pretty cheap. But the one that I picked up here was um, done by uh, – it basically, it has, like, a bunch of different examples of good picture quality. They've got, like, puppies. They've got, like, driving scenes. But the music is backed up by this guy that did the music for a favorite anime of mine, Evangelion. And – I'm going to probably mispronounce it, but it's Shigaki Saegusa. And, um, but yeah, it's just, just like what you were saying, except none of these are commercial movies or commercial like videos or anything like that. It's just examples. It's like stock footage. Yeah, stock footage. There's, uh, like, take a look at the, like, the metallic tones. In fact, this even came with a sheet, uh, both in Japanese and in English, because this which, is a- which was really cool. I remember when you when you pulled it out and you were like, "Oh shit, it's even in English because it is a Japanese disc." Exactly. So yeah. you wouldn't you wouldn't expect it to have this huge you know technical readout essentially, uh, teaching you know people that can only read English how to properly present it. Well, that makes me think that maybe um, yeah, who produced this? Um, it doesn't really say, but I'm, I'm assuming that whatever company produced this maybe ships some of these off over to America. Yeah. Well, I think Laser Vision is one of the companies. Uh, oh. And it is for Laser Vision video disc, so. Okay. But, yeah, I think Laser Vision is a company. Okay. But, yeah, like uh, like we were saying, like, it has a chart that lists, you know, each chapter, specific frames that you can go to, but they give a description and next to these descriptions, they also say, hey, here's what you should pay attention to. Like, for example, flowers, another test for faithful color rendition without un- unevenness. So it's specifically questions and statements that you can say to yeah. the person you're selling to, hey, check this out. Yeah. You know, this is a lot of the techniques. There was another one that was like, look at all the individual blades of grass. Aren't they beautiful? Yeah. And the shininess of the metal, you can actually tell 
It's metal. And not plastic. <laughs> so, yeah, this is a lot of cool stuff that, like, you know, at my sales job at HH Greg that we would also do. Yeah. Like, you, you want to pinpoint this stuff. Yeah, at Best Buy, we did the same thing. That's oh, sweet. All right, so that's uh, that's my demo disc. I think I had one. Uh, I think that I had another one that was, like, a record demo disc at home mm-hmm. that I might have brought. But that was just record. It's not Laserdisc. And that's yeah. not what the show's about. Nah. Not nah. So, I think... Catch, oh. us, catch us on vinyl dicks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's very easy to superimpose the like a record yeah. right on top of our yeah. logos. We'll just I'll just black it out as opposed to have it be shiny like a laser disc. Exactly. <laughs> Don't even have to retake the picture. Exactly. All right. So then I'm going to follow this up with something that we had talked about previously: the dead side discs. Because mm-hmm. um, I remember that I had one. Yeah. Um, my coworker specifically that got me into laser disc gave me one as a gift, and this particular guy. Now, real quick to refresh uh, oh, the yeah. listener's memory, uh, what do you mean by dead side disc? Dead side disc is specifically uh, discs that have been rewritten on, and they have one side that's not normally supposed to be played. It's like the laser disc turtle. Like mm-hmm. if you normally play it, it's just supposed to say, "Hey, can't play this disc." But you're saying that this is a special instance for recycled disc, like. Like, for whatever reason, it didn't go out and get sold, or it was sent back, and they were like, well, we can still reuse this and write a new movie on top of it. Exactly. So instead of burning just the Laserdisc Turtle to it, they specifically put just a solution on it. Mm-hmm. So what people will do is you know, take an alcoholic-based solution, I believe. I'm not exactly sure what it compromises of, but you're, you're able to like wipe off the film. And then actually play it. So this particular disc is actually um, five, side five to Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, uh, that movie by uh, the yeah, Beatles. Yeah, I believe it's one of the Beatles movies. Uh, it, yeah, and uh, on the, the final side, it's not supposed to have anything. But when we popped it in, he had actually put the solution already on it. And it was a Sherlock Holmes movie, yeah, movie we, or series. Uh, yeah, we tried to deduce uh, which yeah. incarnation of uh, right, yeah. <laughs> uh, which incarnation of Sherlock Holmes it was, based on the little bit of the the little bit that we watched. And mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure it's the Private Life of Sherlock Holmes, which uh, I believe came out in 1970, okay. starring uh, Christopher Lee. Oh, if I, oh. Remember, if I remember correctly. Oh, well, check out your phone. But yeah, the clues that we got. So those of you that have seen. Um, a lot of different versions of Sherlock Holmes. This specifically, it was set in like the old old times. Uh, it involved Moriarty on the run. Uh, he was hiding from them, and they had a hound that was sniffing out uh, where Moriarty had gone. Um, oh, and it involved a, the scene that we saw involved a bribe. That was pretty funny. It's just like, I don't remember where this guy has gone. Well, does this refresh your memory? <laughs> it was a little, I forget what, uh, it was definitely a bill. I don't know what kind of bills that yeah. they have over there in England. Um. But uh, if you if you can't find it, that's cool. That's cool. We don't. Yeah. But um, cause it, the 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 big problem was that we had we had watched like two minutes of it, and then we started you know looking at some of the other uh, discs that Ken brought over. And uh, yes, it is Christopher Lee, by the oh, way. Oh, nice. Uh, and then we went on to do other things, or he went on to continue checking his other discs, and I started you know sleuthing around trying to find it. So I was. I was like doing this all by memory. It's like, well, I, it seemed like it was from the 70s, so mm. let me narrow down the band, you know, like it's definitely not one of the 30s or 40s, you know, movies and it's not, you know, the 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 Guy Ritchie films. <laughs> oh god, yeah. All right. Uh well then I'm going to follow that up with another one that my co- old coworker gave me. This I thought it was just like how it works kind of series, but it, I think it turns out that this is just really just a pioneer demo uh, not even a demo disc, but like a disc to educate um, people who go into the store to look at these laser disc players uh, on what they are. Um, side one specifically is, uh, narr- and it's presented by Patrick O'Neill. It's what is a laser disc? What is you know what do you need to get this technology up and running in your home? Um, and it's a cool little presentation there. And then follow that up on this side two with uh, Don Herbert, specifically Mr. Wizard. And he introduced himself. You might know me growing up as Mr. Wizard. And he talks about the science behind it, which was actually kind of cool. Like, I, uh, it goes into, you know, what the laser is. He takes apart the player and, you know, throws some CO2 on it so you can see where the laser is going. Um, but I thought that was really cool. Like, I'm going to have to sit down and watch this, you know, sometime because there's always been advertisements and extended yeah extended advertisements like i do you remember that leonard nimoy one i do that what we watched that was pretty cool that they, they had they made it sort of star trekky because it's like what is this particular th- this uh strange being that has come down to explain what a laser disc is and a laser mm-hmm. disc player oh laser vision you say um so that, that 
they're more of like extended commercials ex- detailing, hey, you should really buy this Pioneer uh, thingamajig. So, uh, so that was kind of fun. Um, then I got one here. It's just a minor note, but this is uh, I, there's a store, Record and Tape Exchange, locally in the Northern Virginia area, and they had this um, karaoke disc. And karaoke apparently was really big for laser discs because it was kind of the first digital esque medium, I would say. I mean, so you could you know have have a bunch of different uh, you could store a bunch of these things. So this one is in, all in Chinese, and I mean, the only reason I really picked it up was because it was a only karaoke disc that I could find, um, and I thought it had you know an English track on there with "Happy Birthday to You," but. It doesn't. It's just somebody just threw another Chinese karaoke disc inside without without too much thought to it. But, uh, I mean, it's cool. I have actually the uh, Laser Active uh, um, car- uh, Karaoke Sega Genesis combination um, laser disc player, and uh, I've been dying to get it repaired. I still I have the part. One of these days I'm going to have you over. We'll try to get this thing repaired. Hell yeah. Um, but uh, eventually, but yeah, I'd love to get this a shot because, I mean... I've got the the karaoke unit, and I've got the Genesis unit. Play, maybe to play some mega laser discs. Let's do it. All right. Um, <laughs> second to last, two of my favorite movies. This is kind of like what my claim to fame, because you've got The Keep as one of the only things that got printed on uh, Laserdisc and nowhere else besides Amazon. Yes. Um, these two I've never seen printed elsewhere, but basically they're – I know I keep I keep doing that to you, moving in away from the mic. You hate me. Yeah, you, you hate me. It's it's troublesome. All right, so basically, I've got these, um, I've I've got these NFL blooper discs that NFL specifically doesn't. They don't like uh, reprint a lot of stuff. Like they always have that copyright. They you don't really see a lot of NFL movies um, nowadays. Like you've got some collections. Like my dad has a Steelers like championships Super Bowl. Um, m- movie, but these I haven't seen before reprinted. But they're called Football Follies. Mm-hmm. Um, specifically, the first one is Football Follies in the Sensational Sixties, and the second one is the Son of Football Follies and the Big Game America. And what makes these great is just how they are presented. Because you could have just like you know a blooper show. I've seen some of those before, but these the narrator is what makes it. Like the narrator for this guy is that the cheesy you know, 60s narrator that all he does is just like, hey, he's up for the windup. Here's the pitch. Oh, he flops it. That sort of that sort of thing. And it's nothing but that. And they've got, you know, each different section for quarterbacks, runners, receivers. Uh, I think they have emotions where basically the uh, coach is going nuts. Hmm. Um, but I love this. And I've digitized at least the football follies portion for both of these discs. And it's just a great time. It's a great snapshot of history of, you know, they were really rough back then. Like, yeah. old football is not played like new football. Like, they could kill somebody if they weren't, you know, built for that sort sort of sport. <laughs> the second uh, Football Follies one, the son of Football Follies, is awesome because Mel Blanc, who people might remember as the cartoon master for voices. Bugs uh, Bunny. Bugs Bunny. Like, all those voices. Yeah. Uh, he narrates this specifically with the cartoon voices and it's great so you have bugs bunnies like oh man i didn't I should have take that left turn at albuquerque oh man i'm going deep now and uh it's great like it's it's a they re- makes it a lot like how the you know the radio announcer style voice from the first one he does his own cartoon style and it's fantastic so that's another good one and bonus deal they have the uh like a um, a history of the big game using some of the same clips, but they have a history of the time period. Uh, and this one specifically, you know, the 1968 that, uh, that uh, commemorates the first 50 years of the NFL. So that was pretty cool. And the final one, I think I might've mentioned this. I can't remember if I did or not, but this is probably one of the nerdiest things I own. <laughs> like it, that's you could, saying a lot. That is saying a lot. Um, what I have here is a history of, Super Sentai heroines and villainesses from 1968 through 1993, specifically hosted by uh, the Pink Ranger and Rita Repulsa. I don't. I think her name is. I, f- I forget her. I think it's like Lamy or something like that. I don't know. The I forget the sorcerer's name in ja- uh, for the Japanese production of uh, Jew Ranger, but. 
Uh, it's a history with them narrating all the different heroines and villainesses from each time, each different Sentai show. And it's great to watch. Like it doesn't show a lot of these suits, but it's great because with villainesses and heroines, they're sexy. You know, it was like a a way to like show off like different style outfits. So instead of doing suits, they would do crazy like uh, almost. Almost like, uh, help me, I'm, I'm trying to think of, like a fashion show, if you will. It was almost like a fashion show of different outfits. Because it's not, you know, all spandex and everything like that. I mean, you get some crazy headsets here. You get some really headpieces here. You get some crazy makeup and masks. Like, this was really a product of its time, showcasing all these different years. Uh, and what I really liked is that the they have a feature at the very end. They get uh, the Pink Ranger and Rita together after all that time to talk about their experiences. And it's so great. Like the actress that played Rita is a really cool person. She's actually done several other villainesses roles in the history of Sentai. That wasn't her only one. And it's sad to say that uh, she passed away, but she looks like she had a great time doing this. Like she, she's one of the villains and you could see this from, you know, Power Rangers. She chewed the scenery. Like she was the one that was just like, Oh, my pretties, I'm going to destroy you now. That sort of thing. So I like this because... Did did she play Rita in the Power Rangers movie? No. Okay, that, um, was, that was someone else? Trivia facts. They actually replaced her uh, for when they got introduced Lord Zed because Lord Zed didn't exist in the original Jew Ranger show. So because they were doing all original footage, they just got... Um, I think they got the person that actually voiced, did the voice dub, dressed her up because yeah. they could get the costume. They, in fact, they had it. Um, yeah, they had it because uh, they dressed uh, Kimberly in that costume for a particular scene where they were grooming her to be the next Rita. Right. That was a weird episode, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I was so young that I didn't even notice. Yeah. No. I mean, it's hard to. It's hard. Uh, yeah. To. She. I mean, she, you. It's just you know half her face that you really see anyway exactly and they just had to get an asian woman woman to uh to dress up that way so um yeah i mean it's worth it watching those old old episodes to like see i think i showed you there's that chunk of change where they just replaced the entire cast yeah or yeah they 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 like what, what was it like didn't have the red ranger the yellow ranger the, the black ranger for seven episodes yeah they just use old dub and people to redub but it's obviously not them yeah oh we're gonna meet you there in costume yeah so that's that. I God, I could have my own podcast for Power Rangers. I could, could just, I could just go on and on and on about the back and behind the scenes. But this particular laser just fits my need for super nerdy about Power Rangers and then super nerdy about laser discs. God, look at all those chapters. That's a lot. Of, that's a lot yeah, of stuff. that's big history. So that's my collection, and I think, uh, I think that's it. Yeah, I think we're good. I think we're good. So maybe we'll uh, revisit because, like, that's the thing about potpourri. Like, we keep amassing like different odd collectibles because mm-hmm. i'm always on the lookout for stuff that's not being reprinted in uh any other medium and i'm probably mm-hmm. gonna pick up some more stuff if i find them out in uh out in uh, california way when i go to visit that store because i already know that i've got the back to the future cartoon mm. which includes doc brown and bill nye the science guy in the live action segments that'll be a fun one to watch yeah so all right so i guess that uh that's another episode of uh laser dicks yeah this is, uh, well, I'm, uh, hey, you know what? I'm going to do it first now. Oh. I'm Ken. I'm Chris. And this has been another episode of Laser Dicks. Da 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 da. Laser, Laser Dicks. This has been another Geek Out production. If you enjoyed what you heard, hey, you know, we've got a new commentary every Monday. We've got a special episode every Friday. Of course, there's the usual catching up show every Wednesday. And you get book club episodes just about every Tuesday these days. Thanks for listening. <laughs>